Hey friends, Sean Malone with Crisis Response International. I shared a dream the other day uh, on our hits video. It's a longer video with a bunch of other details and content in there, but I wanted to jump right to the point because um, I just felt like there were people who needed to hear this that could be really encouraged um, that may not be, uh, you know, our primary audience. And uh, so this dream has to do with the um, IHOP crisis and the revelations of uh, what's gone down at IHOP with Mike Bickle. I'll just be just really super honest with you. You know, uh, probably like many of you uh, looked up to Mike in an incredible uh, way. Um, just always thought, um, you know, in terms of leaders with integrity and character, um, you know, to hear this sort of thing come out has just been nothing short of uh, devastating. And, um, you know, just such a range of emotions, shocked, confused, angry, disappointed, hurt, um, really shaken. And I'm sure many people out there are, are feeling the same way. Um, I don't know the victims personally. Um, absolutely terrible. I can't imagine what these people have gone through. My heart goes out to them. My heart goes out to Diane Bickle, everyone involved. Um, and so I have been relatively quiet about this. I have made a few comments in the past. Um, and I just really asked the Lord, Lord, do you want me to say anything about this? I, I'm, I'm going to keep silent unless you give me uh, something personally to say. I don't need to add my voice to um, uh, all of what's being said out there. I'm just going to wait. And actually that night, the Lord gave me a dream. Uh, I was in California. And, um, you know, the dream, I really believe that this has to do with people who uh, have a legitimate call to intercession and prayer. And, uh, you know, I remember personally, I had a call to 24-7 worship, prayer, and intercession before I even heard of the man, Mike Bickle. A dramatic encounter with the Lord that indicated uh, watchmen on the walls, 24-7, worship and intercession. I remember I was in the movie business and the Lord was speaking to me about this. I was working on a movie set. And the Lord was speaking 24-7, worship and intercession. I didn't know, like it just kept popping up. And remember, I was walking on a beam around a movie set, blacking out these windows to get ready for this shoot we were going to do. And the Lord said, I want you to measure from where your feet are down to the base of the floor. And I measured, it was exactly 24 feet, 7 inches. And it was just one of the dramatic ways that the Lord spoke to me over the years in regard to... Um, this call to worship, prayer, intercession, uh, interceding for our cities. And as this thing has rolled out, you know, Laura and I, we birth cry in the context of IHOP, in the context of worship, prayer, intercession, 24-7. The values of the prayer movement are a part of the fabric of who we are and who cry is and what we do out there on disasters, pre-disasters, post-disasters. And I just think about all of the people who have given their life to this, uh, not talking about cry, to the prayer movement, people who have started prayer rooms and prayer ministries and the way people's lives have been affected. I know how you know intensely shaken I have been by hearing about um, these horrendous uh, things that, Mike Pickle has done. It's terrible. I, I, I cringe even saying it. And um, anyway, I feel like this word is for those of you out there um, that just feel a little bit disenfranchised, feel like, was this all, did I make this all up? What do I do now? That sort of thing. You guys get the point. And so basically in the dream, I was standing in front of a small community church, small white old community church, not a very big church. And uh, they were evicted. All of their possessions were evicted out on the street. And um, like the pews and the clothing and the books and everything were out on the street. And there were these uh, people rummaging through the belongings. And the people who were rummaging through the belongings, they were actual governors and rulers and powers and principalities manifest in physical bodies and they were looking as they were rummaging through these items they were like oh the, this 
these pews and this clothing, this church clothing, it's worth so much money. We should do whatever we can to save it, to salvage it. We can make good use of this. But I knew that they were of an antichrist spirit. They hated the church. They wanted the church to burn. And once all of this stuff was evicted and gone, they were actually going to be the ones who burnt the church down. And uh, God would, uh, you know, uh, let, me, let me just say it this way. The enemy would love nothing more than to see the values, the culture of prayer erased, eradicated, stamped out, prayer houses burnt down to the ground. The enemy would love this. The enemy hates prayer. And so for those of you who are out there who have this call to prayer, worship, and intercession, I want to encourage you with this word, with what happens next. So I saw the hypocrisy of these antichrist leaders, these this antichrist spirit that just wanted to see these churches burnt down to the ground. And I was, the dream changed. I was standing on courthouse steps and I was confronting them. I was confronting them in their hypocrisy, knowing that they just wanted to see these things eradicated. And um, the voice of the Lord came to me and I'm looking at my notes because I want to make sure I get this right. Um, and the voice of the Lord came to me and he said this, he said, the voice of the Lord said, stay the course. That was it. Stay the course that the forces of darkness are about to capitulate. And it was, in fact, the spirit of Antichrist that was evicting and trying to undermine the values of prayer and worship and your own calling to pray and contend for your city. And I know I'm talking to people who are, you know, probably out there on the outskirts and, you know, maybe not a big support base and maybe not a whole lot of fanfare about what you do, but the call of the Lord on your life is true. The Lord gave you that call to contend for your city, to, to, to offer up worship and prayer and intercession on behalf of your city. And maybe it's rough and ugly and struggling and you, you know, you did barely make it month to month, but I just, those are the people I felt like the Lord really wanted to encourage. And that's who this dream was for. And I don't have a dog in this race. I'm not like advocating for the prayer movement. I'm not defending IHOP. I just really felt like the Lord gave me this dream to let you know that the forces of darkness are about to capitulate. Don't give up your call. Don't give up uh, your stance. Don't give up the ground that God has given you. Even if it's just a little bit of ground, your prayers are powerful in your city and they matter. And uh, I just wanted to encourage you guys with that today. And uh, lots of other things I'd love to talk about. It grieves me, uh, you know, what we're watching unfold. But I know many of us feel undermined. Many of us feel um, shaken. I would just say that that's a word that, you know, just you know, Laura and I, we haven't been part of the prayer movement since 2010, 2011. Uh, but still, this has shaken us. It's shaken many of us. And so anyway, I just want to encourage you with that. Bless you with that. And, um, you know, I'm praying daily for the church and for all of us who have been affected in such a detrimental way uh, by this. Just praying that somehow, some way in all of this, um, the Lord redeems, renews. He brings healing to his body. And uh, so God bless you.